Welcome back to another creepy episode of Crime Scene X. Today's video is three horror stories that are true and will keep you up at night. If you enjoy today's video, leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe for daily uploads. Sit back and enjoy the video. I'm not a person who startles easily. In my line of work as a home nurse, I've encountered all kinds of emergencies and crises. Yet what happened on that ordinary Wednesday evening scared the hell out of me, making me question my sense of safety. My patient, Mrs. Simmons, was an elderly woman who needed round-the-clock care. Her family was wealthy and lived in a mansion filled with smart home technology, automated blinds, voice-activated lights, the works. They also had a sophisticated security system, which I was briefed on when I first started working there. That evening, the family was out for a dinner function. Mrs. Simmons was in bed, and I was in the adjoining sitting room filling out some paperwork. Everything was quiet, except for the soft murmur of the TV in the background. Then my phone buzzed. It was a notification from the home security app that the family had required me to install on my phone. Back door opened, it said. I frowned, thinking it might be a glitch. To be sure, I opened the app to access the security camera feeds. What I saw froze me in my tracks. A masked intruder was cautiously stepping into the kitchen, looking around as if searching for something, or someone. My first thought was to call the police, but then I remembered Mrs. Simmons. She was bedridden and completely vulnerable. I put my phone on silent and tiptoed to her room, locking the door behind me. I whispered to her that we needed to be quiet and that there was a situation. Mrs. Simmons, bless her heart, nodded, her eyes filled with understanding and worry. I then dialed 911, explaining in hushed tones what was happening. The dispatcher told me that officers were on their way, but it would take them at least 10 minutes to reach the mansion due to its secluded location. As I hung up, I heard footsteps approaching. My heart was pounding so hard it felt like it might burst out of my chest. I grabbed the only thing in the room that could serve as a weapon, a heavy ornate lamp from the bedside table. The footsteps stopped outside the bedroom door. I heard the knob rattle softly. The intruder was trying to open it, but thankfully I'd locked it. There was a pause, and then I heard the intruder walking away, but I didn't let my guard down. I knew they could come back. After what felt like an eternity, I heard the distant wail of sirens approaching. It was quickly followed by loud shouts and the sound of running. Finally, the voice of a police officer came through, announcing that they were securing the house. The intruder was caught while attempting to escape and was found to have a criminal record, including burglaries and assaults. Both Mrs. Simmons and I were unharmed, but deeply shaken. The family upgraded their security system and hired additional overnight staff, but the experience left me rattled. I still continue my job as a home nurse, but I'm now more aware than ever that danger can infiltrate even the safest of sanctuaries. I work in a small accounting firm that's nestled in the heart of a business district. Being a workaholic, I often find myself alone in the office, long after everyone else has left for the night. One particular evening, as I was finishing up a project, I realized how quiet the office was. There was an unsettling stillness, punctuated only by the intermittent hum of the air conditioning. Just as I was about to shut down my computer, I received an email notification. It was from an unknown address. Curious, I opened it. It was just a simple message. You look so focused. The message itself was odd, but what really chilled me to the bone was the attachment. It was a photo of me, taken from outside the window of my second floor office. My stomach twisted in a knot. Who could have taken this picture? I immediately closed my blinds and called the police. They arrived within minutes, scouring the area around the office building but found no one. There was no evidence, no sign of an intruder. Probably a one-time thing said one officer, trying to reassure me. Maybe just a prank. I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched, though. I informed my boss, and we upgraded the security systems, adding more cameras and alarm triggers on the windows. My colleagues started jokingly referring to me as the celebrity, making light of the situation. But two days later, it happened again. Another email from an unknown address. This time, the message was even simpler. Nice new blinds. I was paralyzed with fear. How did the person know? All the windows were secure, and the new security cameras showed nothing. The police were baffled. 
Days turned into weeks, and the unknown observers seemed to vanish as mysteriously as they had appeared. Despite no further incidents, the feeling of unease never left me. I became paranoid, constantly looking over my shoulder, reluctant to stay late at work, triple-checking all the locks in my home, and scrutinizing everyone around me. One evening, months after the incident, I stayed late at work again, assuring myself that the worst was behind me. I had almost forgotten the fear that gripped me until my phone buzzed with an email notification. My heart sank as I saw the unknown email address. This time the message was different. You can't hide behind those blinds forever. Despite the exhaustive investigations by the police and the upgraded security measures, the person or persons responsible was never caught. The email accounts were untraceable, vanishing into the void of cyberspace. To this day, I still wonder who was watching me and what they wanted. Though nothing ever happened physically, the psychological toll was immense. I eventually moved to a new city for another job, hoping that a fresh start would help me forget. But even now, every time I'm alone in a room, I can't shake the feeling that someone, somewhere, is watching. The woods have always been my sanctuary, a place to escape the daily grind and lose myself in nature. That's why I didn't hesitate to go on a solo hiking trip through a secluded forest trail. I've done this countless times, but this particular trip has shaken my love for the wilderness to its core. The day started well enough. The weather was sunny but not too hot, perfect for hiking. My backpack was filled with all the essentials, food, water, a first aid kit, and my trusty pocket knife. I even brought along a GPS device, just in case my phone signal couldn't be relied upon. The first part of the hike was idyllic. I marveled at the towering trees, the chirping birds, and the occasional rustle of a small animal in the underbrush. As I walked, I spotted something unusual, a backpack half hidden behind a bush. Curiosity got the better of me, and I approached it cautiously. The backpack looked fairly new, but was torn in some places, as if it had been hastily abandoned. I unzipped it and found a water bottle, some snacks, and a digital camera. Odd, I thought. Why would someone leave these valuable items behind? Feeling uneasy but brushing it off, I continued on my hike, determined to reach a clearing that I knew offered a fantastic view of the valley below. I reached it a couple of hours later, and the sight was as breathtaking as I remembered. But as I sat there, taking in the view and munching on a granola bar, I noticed something that sent a shiver down my spine. A figure was standing at the edge of the clearing, watching me. Panic surged through me, and I quickly packed up my belongings. Maybe they were another hiker, but my gut told me something was off. I decided to head back, opting for a quicker but more strenuous route. I quickened my pace, but every so often, I'd hear footsteps crunching leaves behind me. Whenever I stopped to listen, the sound would cease. This happened multiple times, intensifying my fear. I considered calling for help, but realized that my phone had no signal and I didn't want to waste time fumbling with my GPS device. Finally, I reached a part of the trail that was more open, with less dense foliage. Glancing back, I saw the figure again, this time much closer. I couldn't make out their face, but their intent seemed far from friendly. I ran as fast as my legs could carry me, heart pounding in my chest. After what felt like an eternity, I reached the parking lot where my car was parked. I fumbled with my keys, half expecting to hear footsteps rushing up behind me, but I managed to get in the car and lock the doors. As I started the engine and sped away, I looked in the rearview mirror. The figure had emerged from the forest and was standing at the edge of the parking lot, simply watching me drive away. I reported the incident to the local authorities, who conducted a search but found nothing. No trace of the individual, not even the abandoned backpack I had seen. They advised me to be cautious but said there was little they could do without more information. Since that day, I've never gone hiking alone. The experience has left me with an unsettling feeling that I've yet to shake. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, please like the video, comment what you thought, and subscribe for daily uploads.